We had a big victory against a man that really is looking to destroy our country. He's the worst. He's the most corrupt. When we have a candidate in Donald Trump who's openly said he'll be a dictator on day one, it is very likely that he could be immune from those kinds of acts. Nearly four years ago, my predecessor sent a violent mob to the U.S. Capitol. This nation was founded on the principle that there are no kings in America. thought that we could have a president in the White House who thinks he's immune, that office, that include weaponizing the Department of Justice against his political enemies, or being a dictator on day one. Did anybody last night watch a thing called the debate? He studied very hard. He studied so hard that he didn't know what the hell he was doing. Presidential Immunity The United States Supreme Court's recent ruling on presidential immunity has set off a wave of reactions, with experts warning of its potentially transformative impact on the U.S. government. This landmark decision comes as former President Donald Trump faces criminal charges for his actions during the final days of his presidency, particularly attempts to overturn the 2020 election results. On Monday, the Supreme Court delivered a partial victory to Trump, declaring that former presidents are entitled to at least presumptive immunity for official actions taken while in office. This decision means that Trump cannot be prosecuted for actions deemed official while he served as president. Consequently, this ruling is expected to delay two of his ongoing criminal cases until after the November presidential elections, as a lower court must now define what qualifies as an official action. Beyond the immediate implications for Trump's legal battles, the ruling has stirred significant debate about its broader consequences for presidential powers. David Super, a law professor at Georgetown University, emphasized the profound nature of this decision. This fundamentally transforms the presidency, Super remarked. He noted that while the court maintained that the president is subject to the law, it has considerably narrowed the scope of legal accountability. According to Super, these are certainly the kinds of powers that are much more familiar to dictators than they are to presidents of democratic countries. The court's decision was sharply divided along ideological lines, with the six conservative justices in favor and the three liberal justices dissenting. The liberal justices expressed concern that this ruling undermines the rule of law and sets a dangerous precedent for future presidents. As the nation grapples with the implications of this ruling, the debate over presidential immunity and accountability is poised to intensify. Critics argue that it grants excessive power to the executive branch, potentially paving the way for abuses of power. Meanwhile, supporters of the decision believe it protects the integrity and functionality of the presidential office. In the coming months, as lower courts grapple with defining the boundaries of official actions, this ruling will undoubtedly shape the discourse on presidential authority and the rule of law in the U.S. The long-term impact of the Supreme Court's decision remains to be seen, but its significance is already unmistakable. We had a big victory against a man that really is looking to destroy our country. He's the worst. He's the most corrupt. He studied very hard. He studied so hard that he didn't know what the hell he was doing. As president, you swore an oath to, quote, preserve, protect, and defend, unquote, the Constitution. On January 6th, what happened to the United States' reputation is horrible. Three hours watching, begging, being begged by his vice president to do something, to call for a stop, to end it. The ruling. The majority opinion, penned by Chief Justice John Roberts, contends that shielding a president's official actions from legal repercussions is necessary to prevent political retribution once they leave office. However, Roberts emphasized that this immunity has limits. The president enjoys no immunity for his unofficial acts, and not everything the president does is official, Roberts wrote. The president is not above the law, but Congress may not criminalize the president's conduct in carrying out the responsibilities of the executive branch under the Constitution. In practical terms, this means that while a president can still be prosecuted for personal crimes, such as robbing a liquor store, they cannot be held legally accountable for decisions made within their constitutional powers. The court's ruling specified examples where Trump's behavior during the election subversion case was deemed official actions. Notably, the court declared that Trump's conversations with Justice Department officials are 
absolutely immune from prosecution. Federal prosecutors had argued that Trump attempted to improperly influence the Justice Department to overturn his 2020 election loss to Joe Biden. They accused Trump of using the department's authority to conduct baseless election crime investigations. By classifying these interactions as official actions, the Supreme Court's ruling has raised alarms about the potential threats to the Justice Department's independence. Although the president appoints the attorney general, long-standing norms dictate that prosecutors should operate without political interference, ensuring the law is applied equally. Critics argue that the court's decision undermines these principles by providing undue protection to executive actions that could be politically motivated. David Super highlighted the broader ramifications of this ruling. He noted that while the court maintains the president is subject to the law, it has significantly narrowed the scope of accountability. These are the kinds of powers more familiar to dictators than to presidents of democratic countries, Super remarked. As the legal community and the public digest this ruling, the debate over presidential immunity and accountability is set to intensify. The long-term impact on presidential authority and the rule of law in the United States remains uncertain, but the significance of this Supreme Court decision is already profoundly clear. Experts warn Supreme Court. Furthermore, as the ramifications of the Supreme Court's recent ruling on presidential immunity are analyzed, legal scholars express concerns about the decision's potential to embolden future presidents to act without accountability. Claire Finkelstein, a professor of law and philosophy at the University of Pennsylvania, highlighted the broader implications of this ruling. The long-term significance of this ruling should not be underestimated, Finkelstein emphasized in an interview. It suggests that if Donald Trump becomes president again, he could exploit his official capacity to subvert the law and shield himself from criminal liability. Matt Dalek, a political historian and professor at George Washington University, also criticized the decision, describing it as appalling and an assault on the constitutional limits designed to prevent abuses of power. The ruling, he argued, undermines the foundational principles intended to check executive overreach. In her dissent, Justice Sonia Sotomayor vehemently opposed the majority's reasoning. She pointed out the extraordinary power vested in the president, warning that the ruling could lead to a scenario where presidential actions, no matter how egregious, are protected from prosecution. Orders the Navy's SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival, immune, Sotomayor wrote, illustrating the extreme consequences of unchecked presidential authority. David Super supported Sotomayor's concerns, noting that the president's role as commander-in-chief leaves little room for oversight. No other official can overrule the president in military command, making his orders absolutely immune under this decision, he explained. Before Trump's indictments, no former U.S. president had faced such legal challenges. Trump, who denies any wrongdoing and labels the charges against him as a politically motivated witch hunt, is currently contending with four criminal cases, including two related to election subversion. As Trump views against President Joe Biden in the 2024 presidential race, the implications of this ruling will likely remain a focal point in discussions about presidential power and legal accountability. Historical Parallels The Supreme Court's recent ruling on presidential immunity, while monumental, is not without precedent. Richard Nixon, embroiled in the Watergate scandal for using government resources to spy on political rivals, narrowly escaped criminal charges due to a pardon by his successor, Gerald Ford, in 1974. The Supreme Court had previously granted presidents immunity from civil damages in a case against Nixon, establishing an early foundation for presidential protection. During the Ronald Reagan administration, the Iran-Contra affair saw several officials indicted for illegally selling weapons to Iran to fund Nicaraguan rebels. Reagan himself, despite denying knowledge of the complex transactions, was never charged. In a similar vein, the Obama administration opted not to pursue legal action against executive branch officials who authorized torture during the George W. Bush presidency. 
Chris Edelson, an assistant professor of government at American University and author of Power Without Constraint, the Post-9-11 Presidency and National Security, contextualizes the Supreme Court's recent decision within a broader historical framework. He argues that U.S. presidents have long exercised power without significant restrictions. What's different now is the court has endorsed that, and we have a candidate for president who has made clear he will seek to rule as a dictator, Edelson said. Trump's own words underscore this concern. He declared last year that he would act as a dictator only on his first day in office to close the border. Edelson describes the court's decision as radical, likening it to the controversial assertions made by Nixon. In a 1977 TV interview, Nixon famously claimed, when the president does something, that means it's not illegal. At the time, this statement was met with widespread outrage. The court today has said that Nixon was actually right, Edelson remarked, highlighting the ruling's profound implications. Discussions over the boundaries of presidential power and accountability have been rekindled as a result of the ruling. Those who are opposed to this decision claim that it provides future presidents with a potentially hazardous level of immunity, which could allow them to act without fear of repercussions. The examples of presidential overreach throughout history, ranging from Watergate to Iran-Contra and beyond, serve as cautionary lessons about the authority of the executive branch that is not properly scrutinized. As Trump faces multiple criminal charges and campaigns for the 2024 presidency, the ruling's impact on the future landscape of American governance remains a critical issue. Legal scholars and historians alike warn that the decision could fundamentally alter the balance of power, potentially eroding the very checks and balances that underpin the U.S. democratic system. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.